Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode here of Essential Marketing. My name is David White. Today, we're gonna to be kicking off a three-part series that's based on a talk that we were recently able to give here at a local college here in Puyallup, just south of Seattle. And uh, the first part is gonna be why we love marketing. Enjoy. So we're gonna dive in with three reasons why we love marketing. Number one is growth. And what I mean with that is that we're always in marketing at the forefront at growing things. When a customer hires us to help them with their marketing, they're out to grow more customers, grow market share, grow the amount of traffic they're getting to their website, grow the amount of leads that they have. So we're at the forefront of growth, right? And, and so one thing that, um, that I always remind myself and my team of is if we're doing our job right, we're constantly celebrating. Like just today, we launched um, an ad campaign for a new customer. He, uh, he has a mobile auto repair service and just launched yesterday within less than 24 hours. There's nothing more um, uh, exciting than be able to send a text message to the new customer and say, congratulations, we got your first lead, right? And it's because of the advertising that we put into market. And so, so that's, I think, the, the number one item for us of why we're so excited to be in the marketing field is that it's always tied to growing, right? Um, so that's more holistically. At a personal level, uh, the other thing that excites me in the area of marketing, and I think a lot of our, and I think a lot of um, uh, individuals, even within our team, is the opportunity is also for your salary. And so, and let me unpack that a little bit more, right? Is that um, if you are tied in a company, big or small, to revenue, typically you're going to see bigger potential, bigger opportunities for improvements also in what you are earning, right? And so, but at the same, at the same time, the Jobs that are more tied to a cost center, that are more that deal with product, deal with maintenance. The advantage, oftentimes, that they are going to have, is that uh, you have a higher level of job security. Okay, so it's not to say that you know one is better than the other, but from a, from my experience and what I have seen also from bigger and smaller organizations is individuals who like the opportunity of being able to then um, earn maybe a little bit more in a shorter per period of time, marketing and sales is a great, a great uh, area to be in. And so for everybody, irrespective if you're interested in marketing or if you're not sure in which direction you wanna go with your job, my encouragement to you is think about where does that job sit in a profit and loss uh, balance sheet, okay? If your job in the and the department that you're working in sits more on the profit side, on the revenue side, most likely you're gonna have a lot more opportunities for growth, be it in advancement of titles and, and then also your salary and that type of thing, versus on the cost center side, it could be more geared towards that you have a higher level of job security, you're becoming an expert maybe in a particular field. But so my encouragement is, is there's, there's not a right or wrong, but it could be an interesting lens to take a look at as you're thinking about the different job um, opportunities out there. So, but that is definitely something that excites us in the area of marketing, so we can move on. So here's an example of like what growth looks like for a company. So this is one of our customers, Almost Heaven. Um, they are a manufacturer of saunas. So they're, they're the heat rooms, I'm sure that a lot of you are gonna be familiar with them and gyms and that sort of thing. Well, outside the United States, especially in Europe, it's very common for people to have them in their home. And it's becoming more and more popular here in the United States, right? And so we were able to help this company um, at the time before they had started, they were doing about $250,000 in online sales, so through their digital presence. And then through SEO, through demand generation, through influencer marketing, we were able to help grow them to over $2.5 million in revenue. So, and that, this is just an example of the type of growth that we love to celebrate because 
a factor by t of times 10 is not uncommon in the area of marketing, right? And so reason number two, you can, next slide, is innovation. So especially if you're an individual that loves change, loves a challenge, you, you know, you do not like doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? But you're looking for the change, innovation, and in the marketing field, there is tons of it. Even if you just think about it, um, of what marketing looked like 20 years ago versus what it looks like today. You can maybe go to the next slide. So, and you know, one of the examples is a organization that um, I personally have had the privilege of working with um, for almost a decade now, World Vision. Some of you might be familiar with them. It's an international charity. Uh, they provide um, uh, support to children and families across the globe, almost 100 different countries, do phenomenal work. I had the privilege of visiting some of their projects in Africa and in Asia. And, and so if I look at an organization like World Vision, they started their work in 1950 all the way to today. You can only imagine the amount of innovation that has happened and how they're changing their fundraising. It started literally with in the 1950s where a lot of people were essentially donating and learning about World Vision through local churches, right? And then it sort of continued where you know, direct mail had become fairly popular and also successful to an organization like World Vision. Um, in the 80s and 90s, television and broadcast was fairly popular and successful. Fast forward to today, where digital is becoming a very, very uh, instrumental pillar for them in terms of uh, their digital market. We're gonna take a look at a concrete, uh, concrete example from World Vision and some marketing uh, that we had put in place for them. But that's the second reason why we love marketing is the constant change. And then, so on the same note, as some of you might be thinking about, you know, jobs that you're going into, um, that's also one lens to really kind of take a look at is like, are you a person that, you know, you really like to kind of master one particular thing or do you thrive off of an uncertainty and changes that, that are going to force you to really be thinking about and tackling something new. And if that's the case, marketing is definitely a good area to be in. So reason number three of what we love, and I think this is probably my personal favorite, especially just given my background uh, coming from computer science, is there is so much more science behind marketing than I ever thought. When I chose to go into marketing, it was because I was really good with numbers, I was really good in mathematics, and programming is something that I already started to do when I was 12 years old, right? And so to then learn over time just how much science is tied into marketing and the amount of data that we can use to almost game the system. That's, that's the thing that I kind of like, that I love about marketing, is, is that we can get so much information that allows me to get a competitive advantage to other businesses out there that are just not doing marketing well, right? Yep. There are so many businesses out there that, you know, they decide, hey, I'm, I, I can do this. I can put something on Facebook. I can put, and everybody can, but it's, are you putting the right thing out there? Are you getting it in, right, in front of the right person, right? So um, this is going to get a little geeky here, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, Luke, I know, is familiar with this and, and teaches this um, in other classes. But this is just an example of the type of science that we use in marketing that gives us a competitive advantage. You can go maybe to the next slide. So, and the way to kind of read this is it's a formula that we use in how we prioritize everything we're doing for our customers. And the way to read this is it um, is telling us what is the most important thing to get a conversion, okay? Um, you define conversion for them just as yeah. We'll go back to the kind of beginning. Totally. Yeah, so a conversion is, let's say we have a, we're getting in front of 100 people, and the ultimate goal is to get as many uh, customers as possible. Ideal would be 100% conversion rate, which means if I'm getting in front of 100 people and I invite 100 people to buy my product, 100 people are purchasing it, right? Reality is, uh, especially online, if I can get a 3% conversion rate, I'm doing pretty good. From 100 people, three people right? 
And that's across all industries. Of course, there's some differences depending on the industry and your product and that kind of thing. But across all industries, it's 3%. Uh, sorry, I got a question. So when, when, when I look at conversion, not, not necessarily conversion, but when I'm doing marketing, is it, is it better to have it to where, OK, I want them going to the website, or I want them coming in, or I want them signing up. So it's like that that phase of, so if I, let's say, this is just a, I, I know we'll go deeper into it, but for me as a, if I'm doing something, am I, am I going, okay, I want as many people to go to my website as possible, or is it better I go, okay, I want as many people to come into the building as possible, when you think of leads and things like that. I'm just, this is just a, Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remind me again, what kind of business do you have? I teach uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Okay, so for everybody that is listening, the questioning, the question is, um, what is more ideal on a conversion? In this case, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu um, um, store, should, pe should a conversion happen on the website? Should it happen in the store? And what's the best way to approach that, right? Um, and... Um, so let me get to that question in just a second. And it's a great question, but it fits perfectly here in this formula, okay? So the way to, so, so we kind of set the stage what a converge, conversion is, right? Is we're getting in front of people. We know we're not gonna get every single one, but we wanna get as many customers as possible, right? And so now the question is, from everything out there that I could be doing, what's the most important thing right now, right? And so the, 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 the the way to read this uh, formula is on the left-hand side are the most important things. The most important thing of getting a sale is getting in front of people who are motivated, okay? That sounds simple, but in the case of like even the jiu-jitsu store, let's say I'm, I'm about to run some ads on Facebook. Well, I could just go and I could say, hey, I wanna, I wanna target, you know, I'm just gonna target anybody in, where's the jiu-jitsu store at? Uh, in Puyallup. In Puyallup, right? I'm, like, I'm gonna put an ad out there, anybody in Puyallup, right? You know, hey, you might get some pickups there, here and there, right? But that ad is gonna be shown to 60 year olds, to 16 year olds, right? So now you can start refining that, right? It's like, no, 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 no. I know my audience, they're typically gonna be between 30 and 20 years of age. I'm gonna get in front of them, right? So you're already kind of modeling all of your marketing, all your advertising to get in front of people that are likely gonna be more motivated to buy what you have. That's, and this is a critical step that a lot of business owners, they're not thinking about. They're thinking about, I just need to get it out there, right? Uh, they're thinking the creative, the content, right? But step number one is getting in front of people that are gonna have a higher likelihood of being motivated for you, right? Step number two would be sort of then it's like the content, the creative. What is the value, especially if there's another jiu-jitsu store, you know, uh, facility in Puyallup? What makes you better? Like if a person is then comparing both uh, facilities, right? And then followed by um, incentives that you might be providing versus friction. And so to your question about, well, what's the best way to get people to sign up? It fits exactly into friction, right? It's a good question to ask, right? But first of all, if you were gonna start some marketing, you would wanna be focusing on, hey, what is the motivation? Like, who am I trying to get in front of, right? Then you would be, wanna be very crisp on your value proposition. So it's, assume you've taken care of all of that, right? That's still, it's a great question to answer. How do I reduce the friction, right? And so it could be that you know individuals that what, they have to see it, they have to feel it, right? And so then all of my advertising, if I was doing advertising for you, would be I wanna drive them to come in, right? And Because I'm not expecting them to swipe their credit card online, you know? I, I don't know, right? No, I don't, yeah, we don't do it like that anyway. We don't charge, so you don't pay online to do it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So the website can definitely play a big role, you know, just kind of brainstorming with you for a second, right? But that's not to say that you, they're, they're mutually exclusive. The ideas of, you know, having somebody schedule an appointment or inviting them to come in versus, you know, sending to their website, right? There could be an element where, you're, where you just say, hey, 
I want to get their content information and just know who they are, that they're interested, and then I'm going to hunt them down, right? You know, if they don't come in after two weeks, I'm going to call them. I'm going to be like, hey, I saw that you signed up. You know, we didn't, weren't able to schedule anything quite yet. Um, is there, is there, we're running a promotion right now. There comes your incentive, right? And now you're, you know, you're increasing your conversion rate from that point, right? By also really considering where's the friction here? You know, the friction could be you're running an ad and then, you know, somebody's, they, and the call to action is come by, just swing by, you know, whenever we're open, right? The friction is, ah, I don't really know. And, you know, and then who am I going to talk to? Well, you could be taking away the friction by just collecting their content information, them getting a personal call from you and saying, hey, you know, here's Joey and I'm willing to meet you and I can give you a tour and, you know, and just to kind of get them in the door, right? So um, that's a great question and um, kind of bringing it full circle. This is something that we live and breathe, you know, is, is that as we're doing marketing day in and day out, one of the toughest things for business owners is to know what should I do right now? You have Pinterest, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have Snapchat, you have television, you have programmatic display, marketing, like, you know, there's charts of all the various different things and activities that you could be doing in marketing, right? But usually it comes down to, there might be three things that are the most important to your business right now that are gonna deliver results right now. Just as like the guy that I mentioned earlier that got a lead within 24 hours, right? It's because we know what is gonna fall into this conversion formula and deliver those kind of results, right? So that's what excites us. That's awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask you to give a very brief de uh, definition of friction and anxiety because we didn't really cover that in this class, but you kind of did that with the friction, but can you just kind of briefly like summarize what friction and anxiety are in terms of like a customer coming on to it? Totally, a yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just to unpack friction and anxiety. So for friction, that could be somebody comes to your website and then they see oh my gosh, like, these guys want me to fill out you know, all these form fields and I'm on my mobile phone right now, right? And so just by the nature of you having such a long form could create enough friction that you're losing customers on the way. Because remember... Give your social and your mother's maiden name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Social security, mother's maiden name, right? And um, unless you're in Brazil, which I thought was crazy. They actually, they do that? well, for charities, oh, when wow. we were doing work with World Vision, I was like, you guys got to be kidding me, right? Wow. They, but, but it's tied to the way that they do um, receding and wow. tax donations and stuff like that. Wow. Um, and uh, so, so that's sort of friction, right? And anxiety could be things that about just the nature of your business and, it, you know, a fear factor of a person, like, well, I can I actually trust these guys? And, and you know, maybe it's the amount of rev the reviews that you have or the duration that you've been in business and, and that type of thing, right? So, um, so those are things that could be detractors to your conversion rate. So if you kind of think about it, you know, it's like, well, there's things that are adding up. They're providing, you know, that is going to increase sort of the conversion rate, your, the motivation of the individuals that you're getting in front of your value proposition and how great your product and service looks. And then you have things that could be detracting from that is the amount of friction and the anxiety that a person might have of, of then wanting to come to, to buy from you. My, my question, sorry. Would finances be friction or anxiety? Like cost? Yeah, so we typically would treat it more as, as that's a great question. We typically would treat it as, as, um, as friction. And in many cases, the solution is in, and this is where marketing then becomes part of product development and, and sort of product placement, is we constantly having conversations with our customers of saying, hey, look, my job, you hired me to get the best conversion rate. And we're seeing that people are not willing to buy because, for example, we have a, a customer who uh, does fishing tours in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Those fishing tours are upwards of $5,000 for four days. Yeah. So one of the first things we said is, okay, you're hiring me to bring you all these people that are gonna pay, spend $5,000 for a four day trip. Let's add financing, right, to your page, right? Let's offer, and there's, there's mm -hmm. modules that really make that easy and that type of thing, so we typically would treat it as friction. You know, 
taking a step back, friction, and if you, uh, once you guys sink your teeth into this more uh, in depth, and I mentioned this to Luke as well, in the praxis, friction and anxiety, there's a lot of overlap in here. If anything, the main takeaway is um, that I always encourage my staff as well as students, the way to read this, the left-hand side, most important thing, right-hand side, least, least most important thing. It doesn't mean they're not important. What it just means is oftentimes we're faced with making decisions of, you know, am I going to buy this ad? You know, am I going to use this platform, right? And if I put that through this formula, I'm able to then make smarter decisions of where I'm spending my time and my energy. So were you able to resonate with any of those items that we shared about why we love marketing? If you can, then take the next steps. Uh, see what other programs might be available for you to apply for, um, uh, uh, to get a degree in marketing. Or alternatively, also maybe search out opportunities for an internship. Those are things that we also offer here at David Martin Marketing Services. So if you're in the market, feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. And also, if this information was at all helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you in the future. Take care and bye.